Hey family, it is day 19 of the Relentless 2024 Fast. I'm Tiffany Harden, Director of Discipleship and one of the elders here at Relentless Church. And today, ooh, y'all, I don't know. These topics, trusting God's timing. Okay, so yeah. First of all, let's talk about trust. And the fact that it takes a lot to trust, to, to trust people we can see, touch, and feel, and then to trust an all-encompassing God that although we may be able to feel him in his presence, like I, I, I can't see him, we can talk to him, but it takes a lot to trust and then to trust his timing. And who knows that timing is everything. There is nothing worse than getting the timing of a thing wrong. Um, back in high school, maybe playing double dutch or something, if you get the timing wrong, you're getting slapped with that jump rope and you're gonna have a whelp across your face or your legs or wherever it may have hit you, getting timing wrong, showing up late to a party and you get there and all of the food is gone and there's nothing uh, for you to eat or you miss the special moment of the night, uh, timing. But how much more important, those are just natural things where if your timing is off, you may suffer a little bit, but the timing of God for your purpose, for his plan for your life, for what it is that we are to do is so much more important. And there is nothing worse than trying to rush God's timing because we want his timing to be in alignment with what we desire to do or to have done for a specific a uh, purpose. So let's let's take a little bit of a look at that. So trust is described as the belief in reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. What a blessing it is to be us and to be able to trust the God that created the whole universe. He is the God that holds everything in its place, the stars in the sky, the moon, the sun. He makes sure that we wake up every morning. So trusting him should be easy. He's proven himself over and over again, but it's that timing part that might be a little more difficult. So in Ecclesiastes three and one, it says for everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. So, Solomon, who we've talked about a little bit several days during the last three weeks, that he was the wisest man that ever lived, that he prayed to God and asked for wisdom and discernment, and he ruled from that place. Plus, he, much like his father, he loved the Lord and he desired um, to be in the will of God and to do the things of God. Well, Solomon concluded that the cycles of nature were vanity. They were just a vapor. They were things that would be fleeting. And in the previous chapters, he just talked about the vanity of humanity and the fact that it was futile of us to believe that we had control over any of these things. Purpose in life through reason experience, accomplishment, and pleasure seeking, uh, Solomon returned to observing the cycles of life through faith in this chapter of Ecclesiastes. The cycles of life were appointed by God. God set it up this way. We have, so, uh, what is it, spring, summer, fall and winter, right? Every year. Now you may not experience all those seasons depending on where you live in the world, but the way that the Lord set things up, he set up seed time and harvest and the different um, seasons of life. And our purpose becomes embedded in God's purpose for our lives when we get in alignment with these seasons and process. God's appointments are exhaustive. 
his timing applies to everything. There is not one single thing that happens that is random. Our God is intentional about things. He's intentional about why the moon rises when it does, why the sun sets when it does, how that affects the ocean, the waves, the tide, and how those things come in. So if a God that loves to make sure that everything is perfectly placed for us, why would we not trust that his timing for the things that we desire or for our purpose to be fulfilled would not be the perfect time? So again, for everything, there is a season, there is an appointed time. Uh, We have to strengthen our trust and our faith in him. We do that by seeking him in prayer, by reading the word and understanding um, the times and what and where and why. Sometimes we want things that we haven't been prepared for yet. So not only does God have a thing that he wants for us or that he wants to give to us or maybe a thing that you may desire for yourself so god has to prepare you but he also has to prepare that thing whether it be a job whether it be a spouse whether it be a home so that at his appointed time when those two things come together that it is mature and ready for you that they have gone through and checked everything in the house that the foundation is set that that man or that woman that you have been praying about god has matured them to the place to be able to love you as he desires for them to love you that they have their finances straight that they've worked through therapy or however their family issues and all those things that they're not going to bring them into your relationship. And the same for you, that he has matured you in your stewardship and your finances to be able to pay the mortgage and all the bills that come along with the house, that he has properly prepared you uh, for that new job, that you've received the education and the training, those things that you need to be able to perform that job at the highest ability for yourself. And then that he's prepared you personally, spiritually for that person that you're desiring um, for him to bring you into relationship with. So I just want to say as we're rounding out the end of this fast, there's only two days left after today that you would begin to rest in the fact that we can trust the omniscient God. He's all seeing, he's all knowing, he's ever present. He's the creator of the universe. He formed the universe with his words. He formed everything that was. He spoke it into existence that he knows the perfect time, the perfect place, the perfect people, and your perfect purpose for you. So trust God's timing. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for allowing us to make it thus far through this fast. We thank you for everything that you've revealed to us over the last 19 days. We thank you that you are even now building our faith and our trust in you, that we can rest in the promise that every good and perfect gift comes from you, God, that your timing is better than ours, that your thoughts aren't our thoughts and your ways aren't our ways. So we trust you, the manufacturer of the product, God, to know that you know when, where, and who, what, and how to place us and to place the things. We thank you that you are continuing to mature us over these days and that 2024 will be a year like never before. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. So our point of commitment today is to clear your mind, set your focus on God and pray for patience and understanding of timing. Ask the Lord for the anointing to discern, right, the time and trust in God's timing for your life. 
that is his timing is what's best for you and for I. And again, to download today's devotional and for all things Relentless, go to ourrelentlesschurch.com forward slash fast and we'll see you tomorrow.